So I went to a trombone recital tonight. Gordon Wolf. He's uh, from Trombone. From Toronto. <laughs> um, he's, he's really good. He's, he's a former graduate from the University of Victoria. Um, and so he knows a bunch of the professors that I've worked with, like Ian McDougall, the former trombone instructor. He, he's worked with um, Lou Granger. Lou Ranger. Ah. And they work with Gene. That's a, that's a really important thing to me. Um, it was a really, really good recital. I really enjoyed it. I, it was cool because I got to go to the master class with him uh, that he was, did on Friday. So I sort of had a little bit of background before I even went in. Like he. I uh, was working with a student and said, don't do this, and then took a moment, was like, oh wait, except in the some cases where you ha when, you ha when you have to do that because I'm doing that tomorrow in my recital, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. And then when he actually did the thing, which was playing a note and then swelling really fast, blah, 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 uh, I, I noticed. I was like, oh, hey, that's the bit he was talking about, so that was cool. Um... And he, he started off with this really artsy piece. It's, it starts off with just a monologue. Um, the piece is called Mystic with a Credit Card. And it was an adaptation of a multi-movement piece for, I think, Brass Quintet or something. And it was adapted for just trombone and synthesizer. Um, and it was very unusual. And it was... I, I really saw and heard the imagery that was in the piece. Like, I could I could tell when he was in the mountains of India and I could tell when he was in the big city there were these really cool moments that like you just you just knew it was these musical devices that somehow uh, with culture they just evoke that certain feeling in you and I think that's really neat um, and then I also really liked the last one he played, which was, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the composer's name, Schulich, and uh, the title of the piece is Vox Gabrielli, so the voice of Gabriel. And I, I really like that one because, like, the idea of an angelic voice is incredibly powerful, no matter who you are. I'm not religious. It's still a powerful thing to me. Angels are powerful imagery. And the music that was conveyed in this piece was that powerful. There were just these incredibly pure, perfect intervals. Fifths, fourths, and octaves in some of these sections. And those are like the, the, the pure harmonies, the heavenly harmonies and they just came through so grand and ah I just it was a really cool moment um and and there was shortly after there's this section that it sounds like war horns and that's that's fitting for the angel Gabriel he's you know scary dude <laughs> it was I just really liked it. You could really pick out those moments and you know exactly what's going on in the music. And it just it ended with this loud, strong, held note. And then it just stops and it hangs there. And you just, you feel like you're in the presence of something larger than you. And that's, that's why I like music. And I feel like, as I was sitting there, watching and listening to this recital, I... The things that were going through my head, I realize, are part of the creative process. This is something that... Like, we were talking about the creative process and how was just playing music creative in, in music ed class. like. They're just notes on a page. You just the students are all playing them together, and if they're trying to be creative, then you're just going to have a big mess. But 
even something as simple as listening to a piece of music can be a creative event. Because there are things going through your head that are individual to you, to the listener. And that's a really important thing. Because there are a whole lot of things that do that for humans. Like math and science and all these goals, like they're really interesting. You, you get that feeling of awe with astronomy, but it all means the same, you know? But with music, it, it evokes emotions that are always going to be slightly different depending on who the listener is. And the listener, they might create stories and create images and screenplays in their head while listening to it. And that's a creation right there. It's temporary, it's fleeting. It might be gone by the next day, but it was there. It was a part of the human experience. So to say that the act of even more complex playing music isn't creative is absurd because you need to have those things going through your head if you're doing that while listening, then you have to do it when you're playing, because how else are you making music? Otherwise, it's just vibrations and sound. So, I feel like that, so far, is my best argument for why creativity is still a thing that happens. It hasn't died. We haven't killed it. It still happens. So there, Dr. Khan. So there. I'm gonna keep working on that argument for sure, but these are just thoughts that are going through my head. Um, Gordon Wolf ended the recital with uh, a small encore. Um, a lullaby for Eugene Dowling, um, my former tuba professor who passed away a few months ago in July, and it started off with, with these incredibly low notes on the piano, almost annoyingly low, like if you don't know what's going on at first, they're just these dissonant, gross sounds. but. When the music starts up, the trombone playing, and it's just, it really is a lullaby. It's beautiful, it's emotional. And you realize that these deep, tolling sounds on the piano are the death bells. And that's what got me. I, I felt like crying before the piece even started. And I couldn't stop it once the piece was going. And I think I think that's when I truly got to mourn for Jean. Because it it, it just felt kinda numb before. I didn't really understand. I never dealt with death. It was hard to imagine that he was gone. cry a little bit during the summer, but yeah, it takes a while to sink in, and I feel like Gordon Wolf's piece, that lullaby for Jean, really brought it home. So it was a, a fitting way to end the night. He. Was, he was going to put all the proceeds of his CD sales for the night towards Jean's scholarship fund. So that was very nice of him. And I hope that I can continue to improve with my craft, my instrument, and my teaching and be as good a person as Jean was. Good night.